Captain Ethan Whitehall, Company D, Second U.S. Sharpshooters. Uh, today's video, we're going to be talking about uh, roles and duties of a company commander, that being a second lieutenant, first lieutenant, or a captain, basically your company grade officers. Um, starting off, I'm going to basically address the main question we get with newcomers into the club uh, that we are in, or the hobby in general, along with uh, the questions we get from spectators, that being, how does one become a... Uh, officer, captain, everything like that. Um, I'll be going through notes, so if I'm glancing away, uh, please forgive me. Uh, so the first one is founding your unit. Uh, if you have been in the hobby for a while, you want to start your own unit, uh, and you approach the board of the club that you're part of, there you go. Uh, you can have your uh, officer's commission that way. Uh, you can uh, also be voted in an already established unit. Um, that's actually fairly common. That's pretty much how most uh, units do it. However, the reason why most people are voted is for uh, things they do for the unit, uh, their experience uh, within that unit, along with how um, popular they might be in that unit. I know that's kind of a, a really bad reason uh, to address. It does happen in some units. Uh, however, the sharpshooters, you are appointed by the company. Uh, the company as a whole, if you're, uh, you have the know-how, the skill set, and you have the respect of the company to do so, more times than not, uh, in Company D, you will be selected as an officer. I've been uh, as a company commander of Company D for going on my fourth year now, uh, starting this spring, and obviously they like how I've been running things, uh, been treating the unit growing the unit, everything like that, so they, they kind of like me around. Uh, so anyways, after that, what does an officer do outside of events, or what an officer should do outside of events? Uh, the biggest one, recruiting. However, you know, this doesn't just need to be the officer. Everyone is a recruiter in uh, the reenacting community. However, if you are a company commander, you kind of want to delegate that duty down uh, so it's not fully on you. You can focus on the other uh, aspects of being a company commander um, in the off season, you know, winter quarters or away from events. Have a recruiting NCO. Have a corporal, a sergeant, a first sergeant, you know, anything like that. Uh, but for recruiting, the best things that a company commander could have: brochures and business cards. Uh, you know, information with your unit on it for the brochures. You know, what a brief overview of what you're about with contact information, website. Uh, YouTube channel like we have, things like that, best way to do it ever. Uh, it's helped us immensely in the last four years. Uh, again, same thing with business cards, but also just talk to the people. You know, people come through camps just because you're an officer doesn't mean you can't really, you know, seclude yourself into your tent or, you know, have the little officers club with battalion. Talk to the public, get them interested. You know, if they're engaged by the company commander, they like who you are, you know, stuff like that, chances are they'll probably end up joining. Um, the other thing, too, is once you get a newcomer, help them out. Uh, you know, you're the company commander. Again, you can delegate down, have a quartermaster sergeant or a corporal, you know, kind of buddy up with them, help them out, you know, tell them where to go. But ultimately, it's up to the captain to really steer them in the right direction, either by assigning them someone to help uh, get into reenacting or helping them yourself personally. Personally, I love helping newcomers. Uh, it reminds me when I was 14, 15 years old getting into the hobby, I had no clue what I was doing, and I had a really good company commander and the sharpshooters, uh, and he helped me a lot along the way. Um, some things that I would have bought would have been completely wrong, and I would have spent hundreds of dollars, and it would have been for nothing. So after you know helping other people, build relations, um, especially with sutlers. Uh, as you can, uh, if you've been a recent subscriber to our YouTube channel, we have currently been partnered up with Kerry Davison of American Civil War Kits. He's very generously sending us kits to do reviews, how-to videos, and in return he's giving us a very, very uh, reasonable discount on a lot of his goods, especially the kits. Um, but yeah, you know, pick your favorite vendor. It doesn't have to be, you know, American Civil War Kits, even though Please, you know, give him your business. He's a great guy. Um, but, you know, it doesn't really matter. As long as you try to build a relationship with a vendor, either in your area or someone that you really like, pay, uh, you know, giving your patronage to, that's a big plus, especially as a unit. So definitely try to work on that. 
Uh, it's been a great success for us so far in the sharpshooters, and I really hope that we can continue to branch out with that. Um, also beyond that, uh, with building your uh, relations, uh, you need to set up company rules. Um, you know, they don't need to be terribly strict, you know, or terribly lax. And the sharpshooters, most of our company rules are uh, the well-being of the unit, you know, keep hydrated, uh, following the safety rules of our club, uh, which is a broad overview, but also it's more of just looking out for one another um, in a wide aspect of things. That's uh, how we run our company rules. You know, your mileage may vary, though, when it comes to doing company rules. So you don't need to follow a strict, you know, this is exactly how it was in 1861, 1862 to 65. You know, you can be a little more, uh, have some wiggle room with it, stuff like that. But do have a set of guidelines and stick with them, especially as the company commander. You really have to stick to those because if the enlisted see the man in charge, uh, you know, kind of going by the wayside, you know, do as I say, not as I do, they're going to follow suit. Uh, the other thing, too, to uh, really build on is have a daily schedule. Um, some events, you know, they do have a schedule of events uh, throughout the day. But, you know, have a rough schedule. You know, uh, 5 o'clock is weapons cleaning. 6 o'clock, 6.37 is dinner. Uh, you know, 1 o'clock is target range, uh, like for us in the sharpshooters. But always set a time for drill, at least two hours, which going into the next subject for a company commander uh, to have a duty for, build a company drill schedule. It helps a lot, especially when there are some units that only drill for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, it shows. Uh, as a company commander, take pride in your unit. Have your unit take pride in themselves. You know, have them drill an hour, hour and a half, sometimes two hours. It pays off immensely. And the sharpshooters, we are always the first ones on the drill field, and we are the last ones off. There are some units, like I said, they're out there for 10, 15, 20 minutes, and they go back to camp after just marching around. And, you know, on the field it shows. As in the sharpshooters, we really move around because uh, First Sergeant Kep and I really sat down and worked out a schedule to work for us, our needs, and our way of fighting, which is skirmish order, some basic company maneuvers, um, and overall just a very military appearance um, in how we operate. Uh, the next thing too for a company commander is attend your board meetings of your club uh, for various reasons. The biggest one, you find out right then and there what your event schedule is for the year. You pass that, you know, as soon as you get home, text your unit, Facebook, call, uh, email, you know, that kind of stuff. Get them in the loop. Let them know what's going on in their club. Uh, elections, you know, whoever is running your club, whoever is running your battalion. That's all done, at least for the WCWA, the, uh, the club we're under, the Washington Civil War Association. That's how it's done. Uh, you know, everything's voted on, things like that. So, you know, it, make sure that your unit has a voice. Even if you agree with uh, their opinions, things like that, make sure that your unit has a voice. Um, being the figurehead as the company commander, you are that mouthpiece for your unit and they need to be heard. Otherwise, they'll kind of just feel uh, useless in a way to the club. So it gets them involved in uh, club uh, goings, on, uh, goings on as well. Uh, after that, do your research. There is always research to be done. Um, every week I'm finding something new, passing it along to First Sergeant Kep, or he's passing something on to me. Uh, research is a big deal, but it kind of falls under a few categories. The first one, drill. You know, just because you're in winter quarters or, you know, you had a really good event, doesn't mean that you can't crack open, you know, Casey's, Hardy's, uh, Gillum's, you know, for some of our uh, uh, farther south uh, subscribers for you Confederates, you know, open up those manuals. It, you know, just read a few sections a day, you know, kind of study them if there's... Uh, diagrams to read, go over those. Understand how your unit is supposed to move on the field. Trust me, it helps immensely because then you come to that next event, come to that first training event of the season, you crack open that book, you know, things are marked, highlighted. I don't care how you do it or, you know, if you care how to do it, doesn't matter. As long as you understand that drill book and you can, you know, perform those maneuvers in your sleep and your unit can do so, you'll be perfect in that aspect. Uh, the other one, find ways to be a better officer. Uh, I'm always finding new 
little tidbits here and there of how to have a more uh, gentlemanly appearance, uh, how to act more of an officer during the Civil War, especially one that was risen from the ranks, uh, like I like to portray. Uh, it's an incredible amount of research done on how officers uh, were in the Civil War. So there's always something to work better at. Uh, always work on your unit history. Uh, you know, even if you've read a book about, you know, uh, the sharpshooters a thousand times, reread it again. I'm always finding little tidbits that I've missed uh, in my initial times of reading, soaking things up. It helps a lot. Um, in your miscellaneous history, you know, find something that interests you, whether it be a particular style of rifle, uh, leather gear, uniforms, canteens, uh, uh, tents, you know, anything that you can bring to the table for your unit to pass on to the newer generation and those coming into the, uh, the hobby, it's an amazing thing to watch as people's eyes kind of light up and, oh, I didn't know about the, uh, you know, canteen issue of 1862 being this. It's just one of those things uh, where research really shows that you're serious and that you're willing to pass it on to your unit as a company commander really, really pays off. Um, and then also, you know, research ways how to uh, better your unit. You know, look back on what happened, you know, the previous event, the previous battle, the previous season. Like, okay, you know, this worked, this worked, uh, things like that. It helps kind of set a bar for your unit of, you know, this is kind of what we failed at doing uh, this time. Let's get better at it next time. And research will help with that immensely. So after you're doing all your research and everything, you know, with company commanders, manage your company funds. Uh, us and the sharpshooters, we're very fortunate to have a club that gives us a stipend at the end of the year uh, if there's a surplus of funds. And we also go to a uh, Fort Stevens State Park down near Astoria, Oregon, where they very graciously uh, pay us for coming down, setting up camp for the weekend, drilling, talking to public. Uh, and they give us the whole run of the fort. So it's a fairly sweet deal for getting uh, a good amount of money back. But once you do that, make sure you manage those funds. Make sure they're kept, you know, have a unit bank account, have a unit treasure. We're very lucky to have uh, Mrs. Kep, uh, First Sergeant Kep's wife, as our uh, company treasurer. Beginning of the season, she lists off what we have. End of the season, she lifts off, uh, lists off what we have. And in doing so, we were actually able just to uh, make our first purchase of, com uh, of our uh, national colors for our company. But, you know, it doesn't have to go to colors. It can go to... Uh, better loaner gear, you know, maybe more authentic loaner gear if you want to go that way. Um, maybe a loaner rifle, especially with the Sharps rifle uh, being, you know, upwards of $1,600 now. It's definitely one of those things that it will help immensely um, having a company fund. Plus to newcomers in the unit or those, you know, closer unit outside and they hear, you know, kind of how you operate, how you talk, they'll know that you are a very serious company commander, you care for your unit, and that uh, you're very responsible. People are drawn to the responsibility or uh, the, um, to the responsible uh, commissioned officers of a unit. Um, it really does pay off immensely to have that. And I know I'm saying things pay off a lot. Believe me, they do. Um, the next thing too is keep in contact with your members, especially your NCOs. You know, keep them uh, in the loop of what's going on with the unit maybe uh, bulk orders of a you know, certain material, special deals going on, uh, someone maybe selling something on eBay that's really hard to get. Uh, you know, there's a rifle for sale for a very good price. Share that around, keep in contact with your unit. Uh, like I said, just pass information around as it comes. It's a great thing to have done, especially as a company commander, because it shows your unit that ultimately you care for the unit and them. Um, you know, maybe uh, you can discuss idea changes uh, with the unit, you know, hey, uh, instead of having seven o'clock dinner, let's have six o'clock dinner, you know, just weird, small little things of going on in your company, excuse me, but it also helps with your uh, promotions, you know, maybe, uh, you know, Private Joe was, you know, doing a great, you know, last two years, you know, he's really stepped up. There's, you know, a possible opening for a corporal. Talk to your NCOs. How do they feel about, you know, Private Joe? You know, is he going to be a good corporal? Is he going to be subpar? Is he just not going to take it seriously? Or is he just out for, for the rank? Is he out for, for the stripes? 
Um, you know, it's one of those things to really talk uh, with your unit about. And the other thing, the biggest thing is talk with your unit how you can be a better officer. You're always learning. There's always a learning curve with being an officer. You know, four years as being an officer, I spent three years as a first sergeant. I was constantly learning how to always push myself to be better, how to command better on the field, how to understand tactics better. So bring it up to your unit. Um, you know, sometimes their criticism may be a little harsh, but they're doing it because they care for you and they care for the betterment of the unit. Um, the other thing too, as a company commander, make sure that your unit has social media, be it a YouTube channel, uh, Facebook page, or a website. Uh, unfortunately, we have all three. Um, two of which uh, was started by myself. Uh, First Sergeant Kep and I co-run the YouTube channel. He runs the website. And uh, his wife, uh, Mrs. Kep, or Mrs. First Sergeant, and I run the uh, Facebook page. And it's really helped a lot with recruiting, getting our name out. Obviously, we have, uh, last I checked, 400 subscribers for the channel, which obviously it's paying off immensely because we're getting our name out there. We're showing who we are and how serious we are about portraying the United States Sharpshooters Company D. Uh, so social media, company commanders really should get on it. It's, you know, we're in the 21st century. We're in the social media age. Uh, you know, we do have the old guard of the club where, you know, word of mouth, uh, stuff like that is still good old, you know, word of mouth. It'll get out there at a much lower rate than it would Facebook, YouTube, uh, the internet, things like that. Um, and then there's events, you know. Send your tent counts in as a company commander of what you need. I, you know, this is company D. We need uh, an officer's tent, two flies, 13 A tents, and 26 dog tents. You know, something like that. So the event coordinator that you're going to the event for has enough space and can accommodate to your company needs. Um, you know, there's instances of uh, company commanders getting their uh, tent needs in a week before an event and you know, to maybe even two days before an event and, you know, it just throws everything into chaos. Company streets are messed up and they don't have a spot to camp and they have to camp with someone else. Um, so it really does help. Um, after that, when you get to the event, try to be the first one there so you can meet with the event coordinator, get your camp set up, get things to his liking. And then after that, uh, help your unit set up after your stuff's set up that way. You know, all your, everything of, uh, for you is taken care of and you can focus on taking care of your sharp, uh, of your company. Uh, my case, taking care of my sharpshooters. Uh, so that's pretty much uh, my overview of what officers need to do off the field and away from events. Um, stepping into at events. After that, what does an officer need to do at an event? Of course, he needs to command the, uh, command the unit on the field and also command his unit in camp. However, in camp, that should be left to the NCOs. More on that in just a couple minutes. Um, with an officer, uh, company commander, you know, things like that, you need to oversee drill, but do, but do not lead drill. That is for your NCOs because they need to be cross-trained for the next step up or the next two steps up. However, if there's something wrong, they're giving a command wrong, things like that, do correct them, make some pointers, and maybe even have them repeat a maneuver if you notice that it was completely wrong. Um, however, as a company commander, you should already know how to do the company drill and you need to be focusing more on the battalion drill, um, you know, leading a division, things like that, just in case if you get called up. Um, you need to attend officer's call. In the WCWA, especially this last season, our battalion loved, 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 loved calling officer's call. Every 15 minutes, I swear, at our first event, officer's call. Go to eat, officer's call. You're talking to public, officer's call. You're about to try to eat again, officer's call. But those things need to be attended along with officer's functions, be that officer's dinners at events. Um, you know, we do have a kind of like a pancake feed where all the company officers and first sergeants or sergeants come and help out with the pancake feed, make sure, you know, the, comp or, uh, the battalion's fed. It's one of those things of company officers showing their appreciation to their companies and their uh, fellow sister companies, um, things like that. It's just one of those things that is very good of a company officer to do. Again, it shows not only that he cares for his company, but also his uh, battalion and the fellow reenactors in that club. 
Um, again, with building relations, build relations with other units. Um, build them with not only the Union or Confederate, you know, depending what side of the Mason-Dixon you're on, um, but, you know, try to build that relationship with other units. Build it with other battalions. That way you might get away with a little bit, you know, uh, with the sharpshooters, we approach the Confederate battalion, ask them, you know, if we can prove to you we can go prone, which is a, it needs to be choreographed in the WCWA, you know, if we prove that we can do it, can we do it at any time, stuff like that. A lot of the time it pays off. Um, just because you show that you're serious and you've built a working relationship with those other units. And, you know, it pays off either way. You know, you can decimate one unit uh, during a battle. The, the next battle, the next day, they do the exact same thing to you. And, you know, it, it's fair. You build that kind of mutual uh, camaraderie with each other. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. After that, it's... Uh, pretty straightforward. Um, there's uh, kind of like little tips and uh, extra points to make for officers that can help you run your company smoother and be a better company commander. Um, the first one, listen to the ideas of your company at events, away from events, you know, even from the newest member to the most saltiest NCO you have, listen to their ideas. Uh, they may have a really good one. Um, I know, you know, those who are look, uh, watching this video that are company commanders or soon to be, listen to their ideas because we were privates once too and we were terrified of those, you know, officers and NCOs that, you know, been reenacting for 15 years and they've done everything and they've seen it all, they've done it all. Don't be afraid of that. You know, listen to those guys because they're just going to be just as terrified as you were at the same time, but you need to be welcoming to those ideas. And if the idea is a little off um, or you don't agree with it, just be tactful. Um, you know, I appreciate your idea. However, you know, there are some flaws with it. This is what they are, but maybe we can work around those and tweak it this way. You know, little things like that, uh, things that really do help. As I said, uh, also train your NCOs to take the next uh, spot above. They're the future of your unit. One day they may even be the colonel, you know, once you're done reenacting and you're retired, things like that. It's just little things to keep in mind with especially up training all your people. That even includes your privates. Teach them how to be a corporal. It pays off immensely. Uh, the next one, this is the biggest one, have a great corps of NCOs around you. Uh, from a first sergeant down to your corporals because they're the backbones, they're the hammer and anvil of your unit. They'll make sure that your orders get done in camp or they get done on the field, um, especially with the first sergeant because he's the one who delegates everything down to the sergeant, to the corporals, everything like that. Uh, like with the first sergeant Kep, I would not trade him for any first sergeant on the West Coast. He is by far the best first sergeant I have ever seen at a reenactment and I'm more than fortunate enough to have him within my reenacting unit and I'm happy to call him one of my very close friends because of it. Uh, he just really knows how to get things done in a very quick, efficient manner, and he takes everything seriously within the sharpshooters while still making it fun for the new people. So trying to find that perfect first sergeant for you is absolutely a must because they need to be um, your other half. Like first, uh, first Sergeant Kep said in his video about the duties of a first sergeant, he is the mother of the unit and that is absolutely right. The company commander is the father of the unit and you have to have that working relationship with one another to make your reenacting unit work. Um, the other thing too is learn how to delegate. As company commanders, um, especially as a new company commander coming from a first sergeant's position, I was used to being very hands-on. I was always you know, helping clean rifles, I was helping with details, I was chopping firewood, I was doing uh, first sergeant's calls, I was training new people, stuff like that. And it took me a little while to break off from that, from being a company commander because I didn't know how to delegate to the first sergeant, to the corporal, stuff like that. However, it pays off immensely because after you delegate those firewood details, those water details, training new people, cleaning rifles to your uh, junior NCOs, it helps immensely because then you can actually take time, either think to yourself about uh, your unit, how you can make it better, how you can make yourself better, attending, you know, the 22 officers calls in a day, uh, stuff like that. It really does pay um, to have those NCOs that you can delegate to because you know they're reliable. Um, and uh, 
you know, hold the company meetings every day, uh, particularly maybe after, you know, all the rifles are clean, battles are done, and you have, um, you know, everyone's eaten, so everyone's kind of relaxed, has a fresh mind, everything like that. They're not terribly tired. You know, have that meeting with your NCOs, your first sergeant, your sergeants, your corporals. Talk about how the day went. Talk about what needs to be worked on. After that, bring the whole company over. You know, if you have civilians with your unit, bring them over. Um, you know, I'm Obviously, if you have civilians in your unit, they're feeding and taking care of, you know, some of your soldiers in your unit. Make sure they're being taken care of because if they're not being taken care of, they can't effectively take care of their loved ones that are fighting within that unit. Um, so after, you know, after that, you know, this is when the floor is open to everyone. What can we do better? Uh, this, you know, maybe this is what you guys can do better, stuff like that. It really does help an effective unit grow and become more of a family and have a tighter bond. Uh, the other one too is always lead from the front. Never ask something of your company, uh, your NCOs, your privates. Never ask them to do something you wouldn't do themselves uh, yourself. Always, you know, be the enthusiastic one. Hey, this is what we're gonna do. You see that? Uh, you see that gap between uh, the Confederate battalion or the Union battalion? We're gonna we're gonna hit that gap. We're gonna punch through that gap. You know, sure we're outnumbered, uh, stuff like that. It's just uh, one of those things that really cements and has an esprit de corps with a unit. Um, but ultimately, take care of your unit. If, as a company commander, you really are the figurehead of your unit, and if you don't take care of them, uh, you won't have a unit behind you. Uh, to follow you know the privates the ncos they're your backbone without a unit you're just a fancy dressed uh, man or woman in the field with the sword shouting commands um that's really all i have for now on the duties of a uh officer within reenacting if you like the video please give it a like and uh if you haven't already please subscribe thank you